What's up, Sneaky Nation? Sneaky P here, back with all the news after the divisional round in year number three of our 49ers franchise, where the 49ers picked up a 31-28 overtime victory against the Green Bay Packers. Next up, we have the New York Giants, but we have some things to look over before we get to their lineup and everything like that. First of all, I apologize. I know the series has been a bit inconsistent. We're going to finish this season out strong, though. Then we're going to do the offseason. And, and then I'll kind of explain what's happening from there. We got some ideas. I think they'll be good. Uh, but for the time being, let's go ahead and find out everything that took place. Obviously, the injury report is going to be important. And Carlos Hyde, Kirkland Marion, both out for the remainder of the season. This is a big blow to the 49ers. Um, it really is. However... A young running back is really looking good. We're actually going to move um, two players over to the IR here. And the reason is so we can sign some depth at running back at the moment because it's not looking good. Now, again, we had a guy step in. Rashawn Sellers, out of nowhere, had an outstanding game. That was great to see, but there are still way too many question marks with only having one back there. So to free agency we go, and hopefully we can find some guys to step in. Now, Damian Williams is here. Bishop Sankey is here. Um, two guys, they're both 75 overall. I do still think I want um, Sellers to be the starter. So it's really coming down to who do I think can complement him more? Who is less likely to fumble? It looks like Bishop Sankey here. Um, where's their speed? They're, they're similar enough in speed. They're very similar players overall. Bishop Sankey is a little bit stronger, I would say. Um, not as good at trucking, though. And that's key. This guy, uh, Damian Williams, is also better catching the football out of the backfield something we certainly like to do i think we're probably actually going to sign damian williams here he's a bit more of a power back than bishop sankey is um and this is also good because obviously sellers has a speed element to him so um we can just go ahead and sign him to that one year deal there do i want to pick up another guy paul perkins is still available he's another good running back uh, Darkwa is here as well. He's got some more speed to him. Um, I don't really know. I, I should probably sign one more just in case. And you know what? Maybe we'll just sign Bishop Sankey. I don't think we're going to need three running backs right here. I really don't plan on uh, re-signing these guys because we have depth there. I just need them for the playoffs. So they're getting a big paycheck here, um, but I do think Sellers, you know, he's been familiar with our offense. Sellers is still going to be running back number one here. Uh, Williams will be the backup, and then Sankey will be third string just in case we get into some more injury issues. If I could find a wide receiver, that might be something else I have to consider just because we've had a lot of injuries at that position as well. Go over really quick. See you all. Whoops. See you all is available here. And if anybody has, see, none of them really stand out. They're all kind of right around where we have already. Um, so we might actually be okay here. I'm signing Dillard Craft. <laughs> Appalachian State. We got to give him a chance. Signed to active roster. Um, and again, it's, it's really because we've had a lot of injuries. So I might have to put one more person on IR after that, actually. So let's do that really quick. Uh, but yeah, with Chris Sawusu out for four weeks, Willie Sneed out for three weeks, depth is just a bit of a concern. Probably going to go ahead and throw um, a Wusu on IR here. He's not going to be back in time to play. I don't know if I want to start Kraft though, or just kind of keep him for depth purposes. Uh, might just keep him there for depth, and then uh, obviously if you know something happens and we need to move him up, we will. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to keep him there at number five. And we'll see what happens with the rest of our players as we move forward here. So it's going to be an interesting uh, season, man. We've got a lot of freaking injuries at the worst time. It'll be interesting to see how the 49ers hold up. Let's go ahead and check out some of the scores from around the NFL. Here we go. 
All right, first up, we have the Chiefs with a 24-21 victory over the Denver Broncos here. So the Chiefs going to find themselves in that AFC Championship game. Alex Smith, nearly 300 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Paxton Lynch, really not looking that good. Zach Lindsay, only 19 yards, uh, only six attempts as well, but... Only 127 yards, no touchdowns. He didn't turn the ball over, though. Running the ball, Joey Lacy, 3.5 yards a carry for the rookie out of Penn State. Jamal Charles, 5 yards a carry. Uh, looks like he might be the backup to Lacy at this point in his career, though. C.J. Anderson, 31 yards. Devontae Booker with 25 yards. Uh, West going to get two touchdowns. Alex Smith and Paxton Lynch each fumbling the ball there. Devontae Adams, six catches, 46 yards for him. Parker Rich, the tight end, five for 46. Going down the list, Jeremy Macklin had the one touchdown on the day. Tajay Sharp, four catches, 74 yards for him. Defensively, Shane Ray, 12 tackles. Von Miller with 12 tackles. Sacks, two by Poe, one by Orr, Simon, and Kreiner here. Half a sack by Bailey and Murray. Interceptions, none on the day. Fumbles forced and fumbles recovered. Uh, one fumble forced by Von Miller, Justin Houston. One fumble forced and recovered by Le'Veon Hines. On to the next game we go. Next up, we have the Dolphins with a 29-21 victory over the Jacksonville Jaguars facing the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game. And again, Drew Brees is the quarterback. He won the Super Bowl last year with the Saints and looking to do it again with another team two games away for the Dolphins here, Drew Brees, 208 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Blake Bortles, two touchdowns, two interceptions, 266 yards. Dylan Burks, 82 yards on the ground. TJ Yeldon with a touchdown to go with his 53 yards. And then Jay Ajayi going to have a touchdown with 24 yards there. Drummond going to have 51 yards, 3.6 yards a carry. Julius Thomas, 10 catches, 94 yards and a touchdown. Jarvis Landry, 689 and a touchdown. Kadarius Folston, 5 for 30. Devontae Parker, 4 for 10 and a touchdown for him. And as we go down the list, the last touchdown going to be caught by Mail here. On to defense we go. Telvin Smith, 18 total tackles on the day. Sacks, 1 by Jordan Phillips. Interceptions, 1 by Rashad Jones, 1 by Bowers here. The uh, second year corner out of Marshall, 6-2 height. Nice play there. Uh... Fumbles forced and fumbles recovered. Nothing going on there. On to the last game, this one in the NFC. And obviously, we already know who won, but let's go check out the score. The Giants with a 40-21 victory over the Seattle Seahawks here. And 49ers avoiding the Seahawks, a team they've struggled with here. And uh, definitely going to be an interesting matchup for the Giants to blow them out of the water. Let's look at the box score here, all the stats and stuff. Eli Manning. 252 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Russell Wilson, 272, one touchdown, one interception. Bruce Allred, the star rookie, force, first quarterback taken, not playing here. Running the ball, Shane Vereen, 106 yards. He did fumble the ball once, though. Paige Moss with a touchdown, second year running back out of Central Michigan. And then Procise with a touchdown as well, fumbled by Russell Wilson. And uh, Alex Collins going to grab a touchdown on his one carry. Receiving the ball, Tyler Lockett, 10 for 86 and a touchdown. Victor Cruz still getting it done. Seven catches, 130 yards, two touchdowns for him. Odell Beckham Jr. kind of held in check in this game, though. Definitely going to be an interesting matchup with him and Chantrell Wilkerson. Larry Donnell with the touchdown on two catches. Defensively, Eli Apple leading the way with nine total tackles. Sacks. One by uh, Averill here, one by Mingo, half a sack by Harrison and Vernon. Interceptions, Nate Irving with one and Cam Chancellor with one. And then fumbles forced and fumbles recovered. Vernon forcing and recovering one. Frank Car Clark would force one. He would not recover it. And then Zach Martin, the rookie cornerback, going to force and recover one as well. All right, let's go ahead and look at the injury report for the Giants. And then we'll take a look at their roster here. No injuries. Oh, man. 49ers might be in trouble. We have so many starters injured here. The Giants not dealing with any injuries at all. Let's look at their depth chart and see what they are working with. Obviously, at quarterback, 
going to be Eli Manning, the rookie Bruce Allred, will be backing him up. So even if the 49ers get in a similar situation like last week, you know, Aaron Rodgers went down with an injury. They lost a lot when Aaron Rodgers went down with an injury. Now, neither Eli Manning or Bruce Allred are as good as Aaron Rodgers, but both of which are better than the backup Hunley that the Packers had to rely on. So even if Eli Manning does go down with an injury, they're still sitting okay. Although Bruce Allred, a rookie quarterback being thrown into that game, might not be a great situation for him. Running back, Shane Vereen and then uh, Devin Payne, uh, Page Moss going to be the backup at fullback. Will Johnson at wide receiver, Odell Beckham Jr., Sterling Shepard, Victor Cruz, Dwayne Harris, Demetrius McKnight, and Sharon Peak going to round out that crew. Tight end, Larry Donnell, and then uh, Foria. Left tackle is going to be Flowers, left guard Pew. Over at center, Richburg. At right guard, Bond. And then at right tackle, Cantu here. So some youth there, but overall some very good players as well. Jason Pierre Paul at left end. At right end, Olivier Vernon, 95 overall. Defensive tackle, Jonathan Hankins. And Damon Harrison, left outside linebacker, Dior Shea, 84 overall. A lot of 49er fans were really hoping they would end up selecting Dior Shea. They decided to go a different route there. And I think it's worked out for the 49ers, but it's going to be an interesting storyline going into this next game. We'll have to see how Dior Shea does. Nate Irving at middle linebacker with Curtis Lofton. And then right outside linebacker Keenan Robinson at cornerback Janoris Jenkins, Eli Apple, and Rogers Camardi free safety Darian Thompson. And then at strong safety Landon Collins with McDougald backing him up. Not really the best defense there. Uh, a good defensive line. Outside of that, a lot of question marks. And um, going to be an interesting battle. Again, 49ers missing a lot of very key players. Is Sellers going to be able to step back up and have another outstanding game like he did last week? Or is he going to come back down to earth a little bit? Only time will tell. That is going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will see you guys in the NFC Championship game as the 49ers take on the New York Giants. Later.